Now let me see if I got the name for it. We're going to do Lucas. We're going to do uh, Gye and Javier from yes. Empathy. So without any ado, I'm going to hand the mic to Gye and take it away. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for attending our, call, our talk, which is uh, talking about how we build our internal developer prof portal using Backstage. Uh, through this talk, we are going to talk about a little bit of an introduction. Then we'll see our uh, before and after using Backstage with some usage and features. Then we'll explain how we deploy it in our uh, platform, uh, as well as a little demo of it. And finally, we will talk about uh, the feedback that we receive from our colleagues at Empathy after more or less one year of use. But before that, uh, we want to introduce ourselves a little bit. In this case, we are uh, three platform engineers for, uh, for Empathy, a company from Spain that provides a search engine as a service for e-commerce platforms, such as Kroger, Carrefour, or the Inditex group. Uh, yep. I'm Guille. Uh, I'm a platform engineer uh, at Empathy, as Javi said. And I main, mainly focus on bringing the platform that we work um, every day in Empathy to other teams. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter, on GitHub, or LinkedIn with uh, dark username, Guillermoti, so you can uh, message me or whatever you will. Um, hi everyone, I'm Lucas, I'm also a platform engineer at empathy.co. I'm going to be the one who will explain you how we deploy the backstage at Empathy, which were the, the steps that we follow, the, the guidelines, and how we improve, can we improve the platform um, at Empathy. Well, and myself, I'm Javi. I've been working with uh, in the Kubernetes world more or less uh, one year and a half. And you can find me also in Twitter or GitHub. We are also hiring our Empathy. So if you want, uh, you can come to us and talk. Uh, we are nice people, I can assure you. And well, uh, to continue with the talk, with the talk, uh, when one of our principal missions in the platform engineering team is to provide a better developer experience for our colleagues. So when working on that, uh, we always find the same question, which was, what the hell is the documentation of something? That's the most repeated question among our colleagues. So uh, now in that, we started to working uh, to, to find a tool that would help us in that. And guess what? We found Backstage. Uh, so for the ones that are not uh, truly familiar with it, uh, it is a CNCF uh, project donated by Spotify, I think more or less two or three years ago. And it helps to build uh, developer portals with, uh, to have our, uh, the software catalog of a company, all of their components in the same place at the same time. So uh, in our case, we're going to talk a little bit before Backstage. Uh, as I said before, uh, one of our main problems is that our documentation was stored in different um, places. Some documentation was in the repositories, other in Confluence. You know, it was uh, like a, a little of a, a mess spread in too many places. This uh, leads to uh, some friction between teams because our teams need to work with each other. So when someone needs uh, to know how the, the component of the other team work, it's kind of a little bit difficult for them. Another thing that uh, we have was uh, the onboarding. As you know, onboardings in new companies are always a difficult thing. We, manage, we think we manage it uh, pretty well, but you know, there is always room to improve it. So after uh, using Backstage, uh, our, uh, our, well, we were lots better. Uh, first thing important was the software catalog. Backstage provides you a software catalog where you can have all of your applications, services, APIs, all centralized in the same platform. So uh, for new joiners on the company, it's really easy to find anything you have, anything you are working on. Uh, the same thing for the documentation, all centralized in the same platform, along with your project, with your code. So just it is just one place and you find everything. And lastly, uh, Backstage also provides multiple provinces. In this case, uh, right now they have more than 80 available in the marketplace. So you can integrate the tool with uh, other tools of their companies, you know, Jira, Grafana, wherever, all integrated in Backstage. So let's talk uh, let's, uh, deep a little, uh, a little bit more into it. First in the, the software catalog, you can see there uh, how it looks like. You know, you can have uh, all the different uh, information for the component in the same place. You gain a lot of uh, ownership visibility with Backstage because every component has its owner, has its team. 
that uh, sometimes is a little bit different to know who is maintaining that, that project. And yeah, as I said before, you have multiple integrations for, with the other tools. So for those of you uh, who probably thinking that it is difficult or not to add a new component to Backstage, it is uh, really easy. Uh, to add uh, a new component, we just need uh, to create a YAML file like this. You know, it's just like adding the name of the project, uh, a description, and then your integrations, your annotations that you need. You place this in your Git repository, and Backstage will do the rest. So it's really, really easy in the configuration. Uh, talking about the documentation, it's uh, more or less the same. It uses a lot the docs as code approach. Just create your, your documentation as markdown files. You are also allowed to use uh, an incredible set of plugins of the MK Docs plugins. And you can find uh, your docs and the things uh, you need uh, uh, faster and, and easier. Of course, this search is not as good as the one we made, but you know, it does the work. And same thing, to add documentation, really easy, really fast. Just create a couple of empty files, put it in a, in a folder inside your Git repository, and then you need to create this mkdocs.am file with uh, all your settings, your navigation, and you have done. Backstage will render your, uh, your page automatically, and it's always updated. Uh, going with uh, another core feature of Backstage is the, uh, software, the software templates. In this case, when you have a large company like ours, Empathy, and with uh, lots of new people joining, uh, sometimes uh, it is you need uh, something like that. Uh, with this, you can create templates for all of your new projects. So you can add your organization best practice or your security needs. So when you need to create a new project, just go to Backstage, uh, click a few buttons, put the name of your project, and it will create your GitHub, your repository, with all you need. You know, it's like, uh, three to, uh, two, three minutes, and you have your work there. And another core feature that is pretty, pretty interesting is the uh, Kubernetes. The Kubernetes plugin uh, allows us to monitor our Kubernetes clusters within Backstage. This is really useful uh, also for people that are not really familiarized with Kubernetes, as you don't need to, to, to type any command or whatever to see the state. Just come to Backstage, uh, you can see your the different clusters, the different pods, the deployments, and, and a very easy way. So for developers that are starting to work with uh, Kubernetes, that's a really, really easy way to get to know it. And lastly, as I said before, the plugins marketplace is awesome. You have integrations with almost any tool that you can find. And also you can create your own plugins because it's really, really easy. And we, uh, with that said, let's go a little bit uh, with the deployment. So all yours, Lucas. Oh, okay, thanks, Javi. Um, as I said before, now I'm going to talk to you about the deployment of Backstage and how we integrate the, um, the tool at, at Empathy. Uh, even that uh, this talk is more focused on the developer experience, uh, someone has to think uh, in us, the platform engineers. We are also humans, we have uh, feelings. So, as Javi said, at the moment that uh, Empathy decided to find a tool to have the documentation centralized and improve the developer experience, they uh, wanted to take advantage of the academy path, the, which is a project uh, where students as Javi and me uh, in their last year of the university can start um, their, their path in the professional work. And we were the main workers in the deployment of Backstage. Uh, so even a year and six months ago, we didn't know even what um, was Kubernetes. So why I am telling you this? Because a few minutes ago, I was really nervous, as you can see in my uh, under armpit. But this problem is uh, under control. So let's start to talk um, about the, the deployment of Backstage. Um, the best practice to take a first touch uh, with Backstage was uh, deploy the tool. Uh, in localhost, uh, and how can we can we do that? Uh, following the documentation of Backstage, we can make use of the npx uh, command, which is um, part of the of, of Node to run um, exe executables of Node straight from the registry. Uh, the execution of this command will create a directory with the, um, the necessary files to 
to deploy an instance of backstage and running the command yarn dev, it will, create, it will create a process in your in your local machine running the front end and the back end. So, okay, nice. We have an instance of backstage running in our machine. So let's go a step further and try um, an integration of backstage. So um, at Empathy, we are making use of uh, GitHub uh, as our source uh, of truth uh, Git uh, repository. And um, we decided to integrate the GitHub um, authentication. So following again the documentation, we find that we needed to create a GitHub application in our organization, uh, configure the appconfig.yaml file, add in the, the environment, the provider in, th in this case is GitHub, the, the client ID of GitHub and the, the secret. And lastly, uh, add a, a snippet of code in the, in the backend of, um, of backstage to, to make it um, run. Uh, we, are not, um, ex uh, we have no expertise in TypeScript, but these snippets are really easy to understand and, and add it in our code. So once we add the, um, the snippet of code in the backend, we deploy it again the, um, the, insta uh, the instance of backstage uh, using the npx command, but the jan dev command, and voila, the, we have an instance of backstage up and running with the, with, an, with the authentication making use of GitHub. So what can we do now to test the application in local before go to a step uh, further and deploy, the, deploy backstage in a, a, a cluster um, of empathy? And uh, the last step that we wanted to do before this is add a, a plugin. As have explained it before, uh, there are a marketplace where you can find a lot of plugins, and we decided to test the CircleCI plugin. And the steps to do this to do this is uh, add the library uh, of the com of the plugin, uh, set up the app config um, file as we did before with the um, GitHub uh, auth and uh, modify the backend of backstage. At this point, we realized that there are uh, common steps uh, for, for um, any process that we want, uh, every time that we want to modify a backstage. That is, add the library, modify the app config file, and modify the backend. So with, uh, with these steps clear, we, at Empathy, we decided to create um, a deployment plan to have uh, the application running on, in one of our clusters. So the steps were, First, uh, customize the look and feel of the application that was uh, set up the backend and the front end of the application. Customize a home page that is the first uh, page that a developer will will see every time that he that them access uh, to backstage. Set up uh, the database where our documentation will be stored. Set up um, well, the docs storage. In this case, is the um, the database or could be uh, an S3 bucket and install the plugins uh, that we consider useful for our company. We decided to use Jenkins, the Jenkins plugin, Dargo City plugin, and etc. So now that we have the, um, the behavior of the application ready, we are going to set the steps to deploy the, um, the application in the cluster. That is, build the Docker image, uh, customize it, um, the Docker image of backstage, customize it with the um, required plugins, uh, store the, the Docker image on a container registry, set the image um, in a Kubernetes de deployment YAML, and uh, lastly, um, apply the deployment in a, um, into the Kubernetes cluster. Um, we deployed um, backstage making use, of, making use of a Helm chart. And this Helm chart, uh, as at Empathy, we use uh, many uh, open source uh, tools. We wanted to make this uh, Helm chart uh, open to the community. So we uploaded the, um, the Helm chart to a public repository at Empathy. Here is the QR code if you want to scan it to take a look into it, or if you want to test backstage, you can pull it and prepare the features that you want and you consider that are useful for you. Uh, we also have um, more components that are open source, as um, like the X components, components, which is a library for uh, build um, front-end components. And uh, at this point, we are ready. We deployed backstage um, in the cluster. And a general uh, overview of these steps uh, were this. We pushed the Docker image and the Helm chart into our repository. Our CI CD pipelines uh, set up the, 
the image in the um, in the container registry. Argo CD is the um, the one uh, who will uh, deploy the application uh, and make it ready for the users. And uh, okay, we have the application ready and to be used by by anyone. Now uh, Guille will show you a demo about uh, how is the current state of backstage in our company. Uh, the document, how is the com documentation that we have, the APIs, and taking advantage that we are on Halloween, he will also make a dem uh, do a demo of one of the most uh, terrifying things that the owner of service uh, could find, that is a um, pager duty alert. Okay, uh, thank you, Lucas. So, well, I'm going to perform a small demo about what is backstage at Empathy. So, uh, I will try to uh, do it my best with a uh, microphone. Uh, okay, so this is Backstage uh, at our uh, company, at Empathy. Uh, we have deployed this in a Kubernetes cluster, as uh, Lucas said. And this is the home page. You can take a look that uh, there are like three boxes here, one for any of our environments. And uh, it, this is what a developer is going to um, find in the first view of Backstage. So. For example, they can take a look to the Grafana link here, so they ha don't have to remember any link wha of what tools we are using at Empathy. Uh, we, al uh, we can also find for a component, in this case, uh, the training budget component that is a tool uh, like a demo that we made in Academy process of also. Um, so this is a component in a relation one-to-one -one for a repository. In this case, the repository is this. So there is a, a code here, wherever we don't uh, take a look into, deep, uh, into it deeply. But uh, as Javi mentioned before, with this YAML file, just yes, uh, is going to be rendered by Backstage. It's going to pull this uh, information and create a component. In this case, this component. And also for the documentation, we have another YAML here. So this is going to be uh, the way that um, Backstage is going to render the documentation that we have in, in, in the folder of docs here in the repository, okay? So as you can see also, there are many integrations here. For example, for the Argo CD um, plugin, in this case, the component is synced in the cluster. We have also an integration with Jaira, in this case, with a board uh, for uh, our team with uh, tracking the um, the tasks of, of the JR board. And for example, we have here the dependable alerts. So if any vulnerability comes to the code, we can check it from here. And also many other plugins like the Pager Duty plugin or uh, the Kubernetes plugin that have been mentioned before. In this case, this application is deployed in a shared service uh, named cluster with one pod as a deployment. And we can check also the CI CD. Uh, pipelines, in this case for Jenkins, uh, the pod uh, that we so, uh, checked before, and some many insights of the repository. The readme, the releases, or well, many things. Another incredible feature uh, that we find very useful for developers is that we can uh, take a look to, uh, to many different uh, specifications uh, from OpenAPI. So for example, uh, in this service, which is uh, also um, the, um, uh, taken from uh, a repository in GitHub uh, as a component in Backstage, you can check very quickly the definition. So any developer can uh, come here and perform any query to the service instead of using uh, other tools like Postman. And uh, finally, I will try to do my best and perform uh, another uh, demo quickly. I'm on call right now, so if this service uh, comes down, um, as you can see here, I'm on call. So I can create an incident. For example, I'm going to check here, test incident. And I'm going to trigger an incident after some seconds. I'm getting the pager duty call right now. So this is very useful if, so for example, uh, any developer is coming to uh, check another service and is down or whatever, he could uh, trigger an alarm or an incident to any other team in, in just a few clicks. 
And now I'm going to talk about uh, the feedback that we received at Empathy about uh, one year of usage of, of Backstage. Um, as part of the developer experience in Empathy, uh, we thought that uh, performing some service to developers could be ber beneficial for, for us. Uh, so in this case, we selected one of the most, um, um, the most, um, uh, I don't know, say, uh, useful uh, questions that we raised for developers. In this case, if they are satisfied for, uh, using Backstage, and mainly people is satisfied with that. Uh, we also faced here an issue because we thought that uh, m many developers were using Backstage daily, but that's not the case. Uh, they are using monthly, uh, mainly the, 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 the Backstage instance. In this case, almost, uh, no, not almost, more than 50% uh, of the people of the usage is uh, coming monthly instead of daily, and some others are using it weekly, or maybe others are using it never. So this is something that we would like to improve. Uh, so another important question that we raise is that they would like to receive a demo about Backstage. Because, well, we have Backstage in place, we are using it internally, we are using it as platform engineers, but developers mainly that doesn't know uh, which plugins are installed, uh, how we can uh, improve or uh, um, get most of the usage of, of Backstage. So these are also some um, comments that we had after the survey. I, I'm not going to read it all, but there are some good comments and others that are not good uh, enough. So what we learned about this uh, in empathy. Well, we think that in part of our developer experience in the company, we need to keep going on the usage of Backstage, improve it to build it as the best internal developer portal for, for every developer in the company. So we can do this repeating service to get feedback every uh, six months, for example, and check the results from the previous feedback so, to, so we can take actions uh, on that. We can also uh, perform demos for any developer who is new or for any new plugin that we are installing uh, or any change that we did in, in the backstage instance. So developers are aware of the changes. And finally, we um, made a mistake. We are uh, now um, fixing that mistake, but we started using backstage with a lot of plugins and for developers, it was a nightmare because they didn't know uh, the usage of each plugin. So we think that from now on, we have to start small if we uh, create or we deploy a new uh, feature or, um, or uh, tool for the developers. We need to go first step by step and install it the, just the core features and then coming back and uh, repeat uh, or install new plugins uh, less by less, um, and that's it. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions. Thank you for for coming. Uh, yes, uh, for sure. I think if you have more than five different teams in your company, or maybe uh, 20 developers uh, developing in several different services, you can get a uh, very advantage of, of the usage of, of Backstage. But you need to um, um, help them to, to uh, get the most advantage of, of the usage of Backstage. Uh, if that's not the case, uh, you will have the same failure that we, we that we had. Yep. Well, um, Backstage offers uh, like uh, five or six uh, different core features. Uh, if you start 
using those features, just those features, which is the documentation uh, part centralized and the component catalog, the software templates maybe, that's it. And then you would like uh, to add more uh, features. Well, first ask developers in your company and maybe they can uh, help you to, to install whatever plugins they need. Or maybe develop a new one because you can develop very easily a new plugin and contribute to the community also. Because for example, Spotify, um, when he offered this tool to the community, uh, they started uh, with a few um, open source plugins, but they are um, um, like giving to the community uh, every month one, two different uh, plugins. And right now there are like 80 plugins. So start small, I think is the best. Yeah. As a, as a personal opinion, the most important um, plugins that uh, we found that um, our empathy are making use and the, the developers most use are the, the Tech Docs plugin and the APIs plugin because they um, go to backstage to find out documentation and how the, the API for, of another team uh, works. Any other question? No, uh, we have in fact one uh, public documentation using a ViewPress instance. Uh, so there is nothing um, in the same place that Backstage. So Backstage, we are using it just for internal documentation, not for any external. So you you cannot enter in our instance. For example, we are in the under the VPN, so you don't, cannot uh, check the, the the URL of of Backstage for empathy. And I don't know if, if any other company is using it outside for external documentation. I don't know. Yep. Or does your public and private stuff have to get out of the um, Well, we, we don't have, um, we, we are not using backstage as the, um, I mean, if you have a customer and customer needs to read your documentation, you need to uh, give them the documentation in one place, but you don't have to take that documentation also in your uh, internal place. You can uh, divide the, the the documentation in both uh, parts. You know, uh, I don't know if I answered the question. Mostly, I guess. Does that mean that there are some things that you know? Because there's something things that are useful both internally and externally. Right? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We have one external site, so docs are um, coming from one place, and from another place, we are uh, getting those docs for backstage. So the, both doc documentations are not going to both uh, places. No. Mm, any other? Okay, so then, thank you very much. much appreciate it uh, so uh, we're we've got a, uh, the standard 10 minute break uh, so we'll be back here at 40 after it's like a little bit before 30 after now you like the, you landed the timing perfectly right so win 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 uh, so we'll see you in 10 11 12 minutes here and upstairs thanks <laughs> <laughs>